While on the search for yellow Pikmin, you'll probably encounter a cave near your landing site. The Citadel of Spiders is another small cave found in Pikmin 2. Located in the perplexing pool, this cave is fairly simple, having only 5 sublevels, 11 treasures, and containing fire and electric hazards. Since it has electrical hazards, you'll want to discover the yellow Pikmin before entering. Completing this cave will also unlock challenge mode on the main menu. So, let's delve deeper into this cave. Gather your Pikmin army, consisting of about 35 reds, 35 yellows, 15 whites, and 15 purples, and head from the landing site to a small hollow tree stump, which in the middle lays the entrance to the Citadel of Spiders. Jumping into the first slow level, you'll land in a level with some roots and pathways. Walking around, you'll find shearwigs crawling out of the woodwork, as well as skitter leaves scampering about. Swarm the shearwigs, throwing Pikmin at the ones that fly to kill them instantly, and kill the skitter leaves by throwing the Pikmin directly on top of them. Search around the sublevel to find and retrieve the bright red love nugget and head on to the next sublevel. Landing on the second sublevel, you'll be on your own side of two polygonal areas. On the other side will be two yellow wallywogs, three fiery dweevils, and a few fire geysers. Take out the yellow wallywogs first, as they pose a bigger threat. Attack them by throwing Pikmin onto their backs, stopping right before they jump, and right as they're about to fall, call your Pikmin to prevent them from being knocked off. Rinse and repeat until both of the frogs are defeated. One yellow Wallywog will drop the creative inspiration, but you will probably not be able to grab it before the Dweevil does. In order to defeat a fiery Dweevil, take your red Pikmin and stand underneath the beast. Throw the Pikmin from below and you can easily lash the Pikmin onto its body. If it's carrying a treasure, the treasure and Pikmin will be knocked off before the Dweevil takes damage, and you will have to throw your Pikmin back onto it. When it uses its attack, run out from underneath it and call any Pikmin that may catch on fire. After defeating these troublesome treasure takers, the geysers, and yellow wallywogs, you can retrieve all the treasures without further delay. Along with the creative inspiration, there is the lift service and the paradoxical enigma, which is partially buried somewhere in the ground. If your grand total of purple Pikmin is less than 20, there is also a violet candy pop bud that you can use to exchange 5 Pikmin for purples. On the third sublevel, you'll encounter a level of 3 swooping stitch bugs and 8 electrifying anode beetles, a level perfect for your yellow Pikmin. Separate your group and take the yellows to fight off the fiends. To defeat an anode beetle, you must land a Pikmin directly on its back and cause it to flip over and expose its underbelly, in which a following swarm attack will take it out. Alternatively, you can use your purple Pikmin to make it easier to flip over the beetles. Just be aware that the electric barriers that two anode beetles can create will instantly kill any non-yellow Pikmin that touch it. After taking out the anode beetles and swooping snitch bugs, you can collect this sublevel's two treasures, the patience tester and the memorial shell, which is buried completely underground. If you lost Pikmin or do not have 100 Pikmin in your army, you can gain some back thanks to this sublevel's queen candy pot bud. If you throw one Pikmin into it, it will take it and give you 9 Pikmin of the color that the candy pot bud was when you threw the Pikmin in. Note that this will not increase your Pikmin army past 100 Pikmin. On the fourth sublevel, you'll land in a level of sand, concrete, and pipes, with some fire geysers scattered around. Go and work your way through the level, killing the three water dumples and two hermit crawmads. Kill the crawmad by luring it with a captain, and as soon as it charges, move out of its range. Then as it starts to retreat, swarm it with all your Pikmin, which will kill it before it reaches its hole. Try to stand as far out of the range as possible, because if it grabs a Pikmin, there is little chance to save it. This sublevel has three treasures the Flame of Tomorrow, the Time Capsule, and the King of Sweets, which is inside one of the Crawmads. There is also an Ivory Candy Pop Bud located on this floor. Landing on the fifth and final floor, take your army from the landing site to the adjacent room. You'll notice your treasure gauge going up as you move in. Take your white Pikmin and throw them on top of the platform that the treasure gauge indicates, and your Pikmin will unearth the Regal Diamond. After retrieving it, take your purples and move throughout the central room looking for the iridescent flint beetle. Throw your Pikmin onto it three times to get nectar and a dose of ultra spicy spray if you've discovered it. After, take about 20 of your yellow Pikmin and head to the arena. Walk to the center to trigger the beetle long legs appearance, and once the monster stops moving, run underneath and throw your yellow Pikmin onto it. Call your Pikmin before it shakes them off and continue to latch Pikmin onto it as it's moving. Take care to call Pikmin that are attacking its feet back to your command. Rinse and repeat until the Beady Lawnlegs is defeated. After you beat it, the Beady Lawnlegs will crumble away and leave behind the key. 
Taking the key back to the research pod, you will receive the explorer's kit upgrade, The Key. While this doesn't help you in the story, this does unlock challenge mode on the main menu. After securing all the treasures, go ahead and locate the geyser to leave the cave. The total of the 11 treasures will be 795 pokos, with about 82 pokos added for all the enemies collected. Like many other parts of this game, this cave differs between the NTSC and PAL versions of the game. The changes for this cave are on sublevel 2, in which the creative inspiration is replaced by the PAL version of the activity arouser, and on sublevel 3, in which the patience tester is replaced by the open architecture. These differences change the total poco count of the treasures from 795 pocos to 725 pocos. There is also a difference between the American and European version of Pikmin 2 and the Japanese version. In the US and Europe, the time capsule treasure has a picture of a Shetland sheepdog, while in the Japanese version, it is a picture of a cat. The key is one of the few things in Pikmin 2 that can affect the game outside the story. Collecting it unlocks Challenge Mode, a separate game mode in which you go through special caves in a limited amount of time. This only needs to be triggered once on any file, and afterwards, it will remain on the menu until all of the data of Pikmin 2 is erased. Though the BD Longlegs crushes Pikmin with its feet, it doesn't actually crush Pikmin when it first appears. Only after landing and completing an idle animation will it gain the ability to kill Pikmin. This is different from the first game in which Pikmin could be killed upon its impact. This is to prevent new players from immediately losing their Pikmin to the sudden appearance of the enemy. Citadel of Spiders is another small cave with a smaller Poco count. It introduces you to more enemies and serves to help you gain experience rather than gain Pokos, as well as unlock challenge mode. Completing this cave should be a simple task in your journey of the game. And with that, it's time to return to the surface.